Foden versus Saka is going to be on everyone's lips over the next few months. It's already on everyone's thumbs on Twitter, but we've got a whole new method and set of data which could tell us the following things. One, who fits better in Southgate's system? Two, who is pound for pound the most effective? And C, how their stats stack up in the context of a game. These two players have a total of 34 goal contributions between them from a total of 48 matches played so far this season at the time of recording, but the other stats are what genuinely highlight their brilliance. And we were able to find this data through using the new stats head feature on FB Ref, which allows you to filter players on any metric that you want and not just for the current season. For example, here are the goals and assists for every season since 1988. Haaland being third on the list after only one attempt is absolutely crazy, by the way. But we're not here to talk about Harland, we're here to talk about two players who are in arguably better form, Bukayo Saka and Phil Foden. Right, first off, we've got key passes. And to make it interesting, we've got every current English Premier League player who has made five or more appearances in here. So Saka and Foden both make it in with Saka averaging a higher rate per 90. But there is a caveat to this, of course, because Foden isn't generally the primary creator at City, while Saka isn't either at Arsenal, but Saka definitely has more out-and-out -out responsibility for creativity within this Arsenal team. But for pure out-and-out -out key passes, Saka averages 0.5 more per game. This next stat is something that is very important to the entire England attack, but also the England midfield, and could be something that gets overlooked but really shouldn't be. And that stat is passes into the penalty area. So you've got Madison, Palmer and Harvey Elliott bringing insane levels when it comes to this metric. For all three, it makes sense given their centrality when they play. So for Saka to be at 12th, whilst playing on the right is very impressive. But one thing that you will notice is that while Saka sits 12th with 2.2 passes into the penalty area per 90, Foden is nowhere to be seen. And I was quite surprised, I'll be honest, with 1.8 passes into the penalty area per 90, Foden actually sits 27th amongst Premier League players. It's a pretty big victory for Saka and a reminder that perspective, I think, is essential in these situations because I think you would have thought that Man City dominate higher up the pitch and therefore there might be more options for entry. This is a great example of Saka's reps and intelligence here because when he gets the ball of course he's got Tomiyasu to his right and two things might happen if he was a bit younger or not a bit younger in terms of the reps that he's had. He's got so much experience, he's so clever and it's stuff that people won't even see. So Trossard obviously is on the overlap and he could look to make a little back heel and move it quickly. But what he does is he takes his time. He takes a second. And by taking a second, first of all, it kind of creates a bit of misdirection because it feels from this freeze frame that the only pass that's really available to him is Tomiyasu. But if we move it on a second longer, by waiting, getting his body language right and surveying the situation there, and just taking a second to make it a little bit harder for his opponents instead of making their mind up by him making his mind up really quickly. That kind of calmness and cleverness, if we move it on one more, actually, he takes away two players there really, really cleverly and creates the movement to actually cut through and take three players out of the game as a whole and also create a one-on-one -on -one for Havertz, I think it is here on this occasion. Real genius of vision and understanding of the overall play. And the reason I showcase that is because there's actually a reason as to why this is so important from an England perspective. Saka here demonstrates an understanding of others and their movement. I think this is so important because England players don't have the contact time that Premier League clubs have in terms of time spent on the training pitch. Therefore, Saka having the ability to have that telepathic overall understanding and feel of others is going to be crucial when it comes to creating chances. In terms of understanding the opponents, it's also important as Saka clearly understands his opponent's behaviours to be able to do this. And with little time to prepare for matches in a tournament setting, this could come very, very useful. And before you get angry, I'm not saying Foden doesn't have this ability. I'm just saying that Saka certainly does. Next, we have a stat that really goes hand in hand with the previous one, but it's rare for a player to be elite at both. That stat, of course, is progressive passes received. Now, being able to receive progressive passes, it is a massive part of the modern game. Being able to move into spaces that allow you to receive progressive passes, it's a huge part of positional play and something that England will definitely need to get our best players on the ball as frequently as possible. Foden ranks in the top 10 for English players in this metric. But I couldn't help but think it should have been higher than 7.8 due to the dominance that Manchester City have in the opposition half and the spaces Foden picks up for himself. But 
with that still in mind, Saka's 16.7 progressive passes received is simply insane. Not only is it more than double Foden, but no other English player even comes close. There's no agenda in what I'm talking about here, by the way, again, because I think people will get angry and it's a this weird thing that's happening on Twitter at the moment. There's this anger between Saka being sort of good or not good or Foden being miles better and how that sort of affects your IQ of watching the game. You can have an opinion on either one, but you cannot argue with these stats. They're there in black and white. And I love Phil Foden. I've got a tweet up from the summer saying he will score the winner in the Euros final this year. And I think he will do that. I still believe in that tweet. Come on the tweet. When it comes to Foden brilliance and understanding of space and receiving progressive passes, these few moments against Crystal Palace, it gives us such a great insight into why Foden offers something so different to Saka in how he receives the ball. As you can see, he is right here. And what he does here, you can only sort of half see it is he has this little look over his shoulder. He's always scanning. And what's important here is as Man City often play against the low block, it's moving the ball from side to side, side to side. And uh, Crystal Palace are looking to be as compact as possible to try and keep them away and stop those, you know, stop the ball getting into the penalty area, right? But Foden this is really, really uh, brilliant in terms of his understanding of the gameplay, but also his opponents. Foden's understanding of the nuances of tight space to find the space is what makes him unbelievable, especially in central areas. Let me show you. Because the distance here, as you can see, we've got him circled here to that, the sort of semicircle on the D, right? If we move it a long one, he does come that way with him. He does come that way a little bit. But what's really important here is that he's made a little movement towards it. And what that does is it keeps this player honest and it allows him to move along. Because if he actually just spins out into this area here or stands still, then the defender himself will stand still because he'll see that danger. But Foden is being really smart and the same with his central midfielder as well. If we move it along one more, you can then see that he's looking for that pass now, that little arm down, as you can see, looking to get on the ball in that space. And a lot of players wouldn't have had that scan, had that look, and wouldn't be able to make that little turn over to the right-hand side. But if we move it on one more, you can see that he gets it, he's got a picture, he knows what he's going to do with it, and he's going to create something from it. And it takes out, in terms of body position, it makes life very tricky for one, two, three. He's not close enough to him. He's the wrong side of him as well. And the whole team is lost. And actually that little bit of space, and we are talking about really tight areas of space, is still there because of his, his brilliance, ultimately, in a tight space. And from a place of real safety from Crystal Palace, all of a sudden, they're in. So whilst Foden can't match Saka in sheer volume of progressive passes received, he does offer something different in central areas and tight spaces, which is useful against teams who play a low block. Something to consider, Gareth. Next, we have what is probably the most important stat to Gareth Southgate, his assistant coaches, and all of the England analysts. So when I show you this table, your first thought may be that Saka blows Foden away. And he does overall, but that's not the full story. A lot of you will be shouting at the screen right now saying that Saka's on set pieces! Saka's on set pieces! So we thought of that. Okay. And with that in mind, this is how they compare when it comes to open play shot creating actions. Foden actually shoots up to fifth in the table when you filter it like this. But the important thing to note is that he significantly closes the gap on Saka, which is again impressive when you go back to the fact that Saka has a higher creative demand at Arsenal, whereas Foden is more of a cog in an overall Manchester City machine. In simple terms, Saka is more important to Arsenal than Foden is to City. But who's better? Now, there are three ways of answering this question. Firstly, based off the stats, Saka is better. But stats can be swayed at times, of course, especially when they play the two different teams under different circumstances. So next, who's the better out-and-out -out player? Given Foden's versatility accompanied by his technical ability and the output he offers in central areas, I think there's an equal argument for him being the more complete player. But the ultimate question that we want to answer is, who is the best fit for England? Because that's kind of where this debate is starting to sort of rage towards. And there was a word I used about 20 seconds ago that should have given you the answer. That word was central. And if we're looking at who offers the most output for England on the right-hand side, the answer has to be Saka, purely because he's more of a specialist in that area and he has a track record of excelling in that area, whereas Foden's position is more 
it's more of a hybrid between a sort of central 10 and a winger at times. I think this position doesn't really exist for England. And it's also impossible to look past Jude Bellingham as the 10 in any circumstance. So comment below on who should be the next pairing that we face off. And if you want a video based entirely about England's Euro 2024 ambitions, you've got to watch this one. It's well good.